Hello and welcome to Daily Devotion. I hope you've enjoyed your uh, weekend, that you've had time to rest, relax and recuperate. Uh, to all those working, the, those that are working, not all of us are working, some of us are in isolation. To all those that are working, I hope that you had a well-deserved rest, especially if you're in the front line. We think of our doctors, nurses, caregivers, uh, pathologists, especially those in aged care, looking after our elderly. Uh, we especially think of you and hope that you had some sort of rest this weekend. To all the uh, parents and caregivers and grandparents, I myself, uh, homeschooling the little ones, uh, I, I know, because I did, you would have enjoyed your rest from the program. And I know the teachers would have enjoyed just resting. Chatting with my daughter-in-law, I'm finding out more and more just how much effort is going into uh, these classes that are coming into your homes for the sake of your children. So we really do appreciate all you guys that are doing a lot of the work for us so that we can be in isolation um, and do our bit by staying at home. So thank you so much. So yeah, I trust that you've had a great weekend and that you're enjoying our uh, daily devotions and our service on Sunday. Now, how good was that? Our worship was just phenomenal. I think our worship team is just so beautiful. Uh, those songs that they sang were just absolutely gorgeous, just beautiful worship. My husband and I were both uh, singing along and just really enjoying and being ministered to by the worship Sunday morning and then not biased at all but a ripper message from our very own Pastor John. Uh, just a great word and uh, yeah so I hope you're tuning in and I really do hope that you're on sharing our programs because I did and I noticed people that don't follow Center Point Church but follow me um, ha jumped on and had a look at our service on Sunday so it is really important that we on share our programs it's very easy you just you see it at the bottom of your screen right now in the bottom left corner there'll be a little share button you can do it right now on anything together Tuesdays when you're watching United Youth Thursday nights when my husband's interviewing pastors all around Australia uh, Sunday morning church just press that little share button because then our reach becomes so much wider which I believe in in these times is so important so uh, yeah just help us out that's just one little thing that you can do by just simply pressing share how about we all do that right now just press share and get into the habit. Just make that be your natural habit. That's what I do. As soon as I put a program on, um, sometimes I do it while the countdown's on, whatever, I always press share so that uh, anyone out there who may just be scrolling um, and they're a friend of mine, our programs will come up in their timeline and you know, through the power of the Holy Spirit, it'll spark an interest and they'll log on and I know that they'll be uh, ministered to. So let's start our daily devotion this morning. How about we pray? Amen, Lord, we love you. We thank you for the weekend that we've just had. Uh, we look forward to the week that is and uh, we look to you for strength, for wisdom and guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this week I thought we could take a journey in the Word of God and just simply look at who is Jesus. I wanted to do a little bit of a study into Jesus, our Saviour, who He is, who people said He is, and who He said He is. So this morning I thought we could just simply start off with a basic viewpoint of who Jesus is. And in Luke 1, 26, if you're making notes, I'm reading from Luke 1, 26 all the way to verse 38. And it simply is titled, The Birth of Jesus Foretold. Verse 26 says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favoured woman, the Lord is with you. 
confused and disturbed as I can only imagine Mary was. She tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, her for you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great. He will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this be? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Imagine that. Imagine having a visitation to this magnitude. Wow. Verse 36 says, What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. So we're seeing the birth of two miracles here. This is, the, um, this is Elizabeth who has John the Baptist. For the word of God will never fail. Verse 38, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. So basically we're seeing that Jesus Christ, the son of God, was born to a virgin woman. And if you don't know the story, I do encourage you to read the Gospels. Not a lot is written about Jesus anywhere else but in the Gospels. Um, so you can uh, get a picture of probably more so his ministry. I had to do um, a little bit of digging about his life prior to ministry. And I found Mark 6, 3, which states he he's just a carpenter the son of Mary and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon and his sisters are living right here among us. So yes, Jesus is the son of God and yes, he was born. It was an immaculate conception. The Holy Spirit came upon Mary and impregnated her with Jesus, the son of God um, and she had him by natural birth. There wasn't this amazing thing that he just spiritually appeared after the um, Immaculate Conception or that miracle that took place, um, she then had a natural birth and Jesus was a normal boy. He was a baby born into a family, which a lot of people don't know, but Jesus had siblings. His brother's names were James, Joseph, Judas and Simon. For a very long time, I did not believe that Jesus, or didn't know that Jesus had siblings. So here's this son of God living in a normal family. So Jesus was a normal boy. He was a normal older brother. And you know what? He even had sisters. For that, I had to dig a little bit. And I found out that some people believed his sister's names were Rachel and Leah. Now, don't know if that was a re reliable source, but it was the only content that I could find on the names of Jesus. So it says in the scriptures that he had sisters, um, but yeah, so he had a normal life. Uh, and from the time of his birth to the time of, that his ministry started at his baptism, there's only maybe one or two incidences that are recorded, but pretty much he lived the, nor the normal life of the oldest um, sibling in the family. He was the oldest boy in the family and all that that would have entailed. So it would have come with responsibility. He would have had to look after his younger brothers and sisters. And um, some sources will tell you that Joseph, Joseph died very young. I couldn't really get an, a, a gauge on the actual date. So Jesus would have been the breadwinner. He would have looked after his mom and his siblings. So he did all the normal things that uh, a child and young man would have done. But in that, you can see that Mary and Joseph saw things in Jesus because it states in little pieces here and there that they noted things that happened in his life. So this week I want us to go on a journey together and look in the Bible and find out more about Jesus. So the question is, who is Jesus? Uh, and this question was important because he actually asked it himself. 
trust and this is kind of where this week's devotion has come from because I was reading this this section in Matthew and I was really intrigued because I know who Jesus is um, but it's important that everybody finds out who Jesus is and, and Jesus was interested in who people thought he was and he actually poses this very question and if you're reading along with me or you want to read it later on it's Matthew 16 13 to 16 and it says and I'm going to part B of 13 who do people say that the son of man is Verse 14, well, they replied, this is his talking to all the disciples. Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. The disciples answered Jesus with the common view. They were giving him what people were saying about him. That Jesus was one of the great prophets come back to life, which was one of the prophecies of the Old Testament where God said he would raise up a prophet from among the people. So the consensus was not a stretch here. So what people were seeing, and I would imagine it would have been down to his knowledge of the scriptures. Um, they would have thought, absolutely, there's something on this man's life because his words, are, they're quite amazing. Like he knows so much. Um, so the consensus here to think this is not, not, not a great stretch. Verse 15, then he asked them, but who do you say I am? And verse 16, Simon Peter answered. Now, the, the fact that they've used Simon Peter's whole name means that this is important. This is a major event in history. This statement is phenomenal. So they've used his whole name. And Peter says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. See, Peter confessed Jesus as divine, which means of all like God, as the promised and long-awaited desire. Here, Peter was answering on the disciples' behalf. So, obviously, Jesus was always with the disciples, but when he wasn't, the boys would talk, as we know. I know they say women love to talk, but let me tell you, men love to talk too. So, the boys would have had conversations when Jesus wasn't there, like, wow. This guy's amazing. He told us to follow him. Um, his words are incredible. Maybe he is the Messiah, the Son of God. So, you know, this again, not a stretch. Verse 16 also says that, uh, that Peter further defined Jesus as the Son of the living God. The Jews often describe their God as the living God. The contrast being with dead idols. There were a lot of idols in this time. There were numerous, too many to count. By referring to God in this way, Peter left no doubt about which God was the father of Jesus. He was the one true God. Since Jesus was the son of God, therefore he was the Messiah. So Peter is making a massive statement. Peter expressed belief that Jesus was both Messiah and God. This was probably not the first time that the idea that Jesus was the Messiah had entered Peter's mind. And the commentary also says that the disciples followed Jesus hoping that he was the Messiah because you see after he was crucified that they were dispersed. So they're sure they know something's going on. They know he's is important and he's amazing, but there was a little bit of doubt there. So they they're kind of following him with intrepidation. Who is this Jesus? Asking this question all the time. Who is Jesus? If you ask that question today, how would you answer it? Who is Jesus to you? Just have a think about that. Maybe write that down now. And then later on when we finish, go back and do your own little meditation and search and, and, and write us. I really do encourage you to write down a statement. Who is Jesus? Is he your Lord and Messiah? And if he's not, uh, we always say to our listeners and viewers, please get on our website and shoot us your details and we would love to have a chat with you um, and just introduce you to your Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So if you were to ask me that question, so this morning I'm going to give you my thoughts on who is Jesus First and foremost, without a doubt in my mind, he is the son of God. I don't believe, 
I lived a day where I questioned that or I was just taught that from day one and I, I just believed it. He was sent to die for the sin of the world, which I really didn't find out till much later in my, in my faith. I always believed in God, always believed in Jesus, but it wasn't until I was 18 that I actually found out that he died for the sin of the world. He is my Lord and Saviour. He is the one who made it possible for me to be back in relationship, which was, was my original plan, which is why I and you were created meaning that man was created to be in relationship with God. We were created to walk and talk with God daily, just as if you read, go and I encourage you to read the book of Genesis and read um, how the world came into, into being by the spoken word of God and how Adam was created and Eve was created and then God would come down um, in the cool of the day, which would suggest morning and afternoon, early evening, and he would walk and talk with them every day. I love that. And before I did this, this is I constantly searched for this and attempted to connect and communicate with him. So when I found this out, I was it was like a light bulb went on because this is what I had searched for all my life. I wanted this relationship. I would be in my room at night praying to God in hope that he was hearing me and listening to me. But when I heard and I learnt the true full gospel, I realised that it was actually possible. And I said the sinner's prayer and I repented and I got baptised and immediately I knew that from this point on that I was God's daughter and that he heard me when I spoke with him. I'd also say things like he's real. He lived on this earth as, as a human. Therefore, he lived and breathed as a human. He experienced pain, abandonment, joy. He experienced every emotion. He experienced family but gave up having a family of his home so we could. Have you ever thought about that? He experienced family. He, Like I said, he had siblings, but he gave up having a family of his own so you and I could. That's who Jesus is to me, someone who sacrificed so that I could have more. The people loved him. He was popular. They wanted to make him king. And not a lot of people could have shunned that and stayed on the course. So therefore, to me, Jesus was a hero. He was the ultimate example of a life lived. And this is me. This is, these are my thoughts. A life that exemplified the Father to others. If you read about Jesus in the gospel, he always is expressing who the Father is, what the Father wants, what the Father would say. That's who Jesus is. He was selfless and only did the will of God. And even when he was at his lowest in the Garden of Gethsemane, this verse gives me an absolute appreciation for who Jesus is and shows you without a shadow of a doubt that he was fully human but yet in full submission to the will of God and if you read Luke 22 42 Luke 22 42 it says father if you are willing please take this cup of suffering away from me full stop pause but not for very long yet I want your will to be done not mine this shows to me how real Jesus is. And this, this verse and Ephesians 4.26 actually set me free as a very young believer. Because Ephesians 4.26 says, be angry and sin not. Jesus, we hear expressing anguish. Father, if you are willing, take this cup of suffering away from me. Full stop. Pause. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. This says to me that I have a saviour who I can go to with anything. That I am going to feel emotions of fear, panic. I am going to be angry. But the Bible says be angry and sin not. And that goes with everything else. Be sad, but don't dwell in your sadness. Be angry and sin not. You know, have bad days, but don't stay there. That, this, that's what these scriptures are saying to me. Cry out to your saviour 
who has experienced everything before you and he will give you uh, the roadmap on how, on how to get out of that. So be angry and sin not. Just says to me that God is so relational. Having experienced this life, he knows that there is anger, there is fear, there is anxiety, there is stress. But what are we going to do with it? Because he's offering us the hand. He's actually bending down from heaven, offering us a hand saying, if you will let me, I will help you navigate out of that. Yes, it's going to come, but you have a choice. You don't need to stay there. This is who Jesus is to me. He's that, he's that hand up. He, he equips me to deal with this life to the best of my ability and successfully navigate this life. This is who Jesus is to me. Hebrews explains it so well and so simply. And we're looking at Hebrews 4, 12 to 16. And it says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our inner thoughts and desires. This word. This word that I'm encouraging us to, to read and get into every day. It's alive. It's powerful. Exposes our inner thoughts and desires. And the exposing is to our favor. It's not an exposing to say, God doesn't shine a light on our thoughts and our, in, our innermost thoughts and desires to catch us out. He exposes them to either fix, uh, not fix them, to help us to develop pathways to fix things that may not be right or to expose them, to then bring them to the light so we begin to express them, our innermost thoughts and desires. God wants our desires to come out so that he can bring them into life and help us outwork them. This is, this is not a bad exposing, this is a positive good exposing. We don't only read and listen to the word of God, it shapes us as well. This this word is a lie. It's not just words on a page. They jump out, they they get in our heart and they and they change us for the better and for and for the good. I love City Point Church for God and for good. That's their statement, for God and for good. And that that's what this word does. It, it makes us be for God and then he makes us out and he just betters us and just just enhances everything that we do. This is who Jesus is to me. Verse 13 says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. He is the one to whom we are accountable. Do you know God knows everything? Nothing is hidden from him. This set me free 33 years ago. And I've shared this before. Discovering this set me free because I thought I can never go to God with anything that's going to shock him because he knows everything. So who better than to go to with my innermost thoughts and my desires? He sees all we do and knows all we think. Even when we are unaware of his, of his presence, he is there. We have no secrets from God. Do you know there's a scripture that says, I can go nowhere that you are not. Even if I was to go into the deepest of hell, you're still, he's still there. So there's nowhere we can go where God isn't there. His presence is there even if we are unaware of it. That's, that's an assurance. That's a foundation. That's a truth that you just want to take and, and just never forget. God is not looking for perfection. Because I wrote down here, knowing all this, he still loves us. He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for relationship. Just wants to know we're trying and we're striving. And I know that without a doubt because I'm now a parent. And I know that I don't look for perfection in my children. I just look for them. To, I just want to know that they're trying and they're striving to do their best. And to me, that's as though they're winning. Whether they win or not is, is not for me of any concern. I just want to know they're trying and they're striving. And Father God is exactly the same. This is who Jesus is to me. Verse 14 is titled, Christ is our high priest. It says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus the Son of God, 
let's us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. Christ is always at God's right hand interceding for us. He is always available to hear us when we pray and when we talk to him. So he came, lived this life, experienced all the emotions that we've ever had, but he sinned not. The Bible was very clear on that. He sinned not. So what, we, what, what these scriptures are saying to us is that we have a saviour who has exemplified and, and walked the path before us and showed us that this life is possible. So he's not just asking us to walk the walk. He's walked it first and now he's saying, follow my example. Jesus is like us because he experienced a full range of temptations throughout his life as a human being. We can be comforted knowing that Jesus faced temptation. He can sympathize with us when we go to him. You know, I hear him. I know exactly how you feel is what I know he would say because he has experienced it. We can be encouraged knowing that Jesus faced temptation without giving in to sin. He is that perfect older brother that you can look to and model yourself on. He shows us that we do not have to give in to temptation because he never did, not for one second. Verse 16 says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Prayer is our approach to God and we are to come boldly. So yes, we are reverent of who our God is. We never belittle who he is. But now because of Jesus, and we just had Easter, the veil of the temple has been torn from top to bottom. And we can now go boldly into the presence of God. That is amazing. That's who Jesus is to me. He's real and I can touch him. And I can go to him with anything and he will understand. And I'd have to say that that knowledge that I came into was what cemented my faith and was then it then became the foundation that I have built my faith on for so many years. If you were asked that question today, how would you answer it? Who is Jesus to you? I want to put a challenge out to there, those watching and those listening. And I want to ask if you're bold enough to put in the comments your thoughts. Who is Jesus to you? Just pen, uh, type a few things. Um, if you're not, if you're a little bit shy and you don't want people to see your answers, um, just DM me, which means direct message. Trish DeCeco on Facebook or Trish DeCeco on Instagram and just send me one or two sentences of who is Jesus to you. And uh, if you're not even, if you're not comfortable with that, just journal, just have a, have a, an open conversation. He already knows what you think. So just enter into relationship with you and just have the conversation because it was important enough to Jesus to want to know the answer because he asked his disciples, who do people say I am? He wanted the opinion, he wanted their, he wanted to know the thoughts of what was going on. And then he turned around and directly spoke to them and say, but who do you say I am? So this morning, I want to leave you with that thought. And for the rest of the week, we're going to be looking at who Jesus said he was. Uh, tomorrow and the next few days, I want to look at the famous I am statements, what Jesus said, who he was. Um, and I think that will help us um, understand him more as our personal Lord and Savior, because ultimately that is our goal, that everyone enters into a personal relationship with Jesus. Amen. Goodbye. God bless. And I look forward to meeting with you tomorrow at 11 a.m. as we do our daily devotion together again. Thank you for joining us.